Hi, I'm Gail Zuckerman, and this is Growing Older with Gusto. Each episode, I interview people who are growing older in an inspiring way. Whether you're 30, 60, or 80 years of age, these interviews will help to conquer your fear of aging. Please subscribe to our channel and check out our website at www.growingolderwithgusto.com. Well, hello everyone, it's Scott Winteroth, co-producer of Growing Older with Gusto, and I know you're expecting Gail's voice, and she'll be coming, but we're having a little bit of a different episode this week. Gail had had some really interesting uh, events happen, and we thought it might be a great story to tell here to our listeners of Growing Older with Gusto. So, Gail's here. Say hello, say hello Gail. Hi, Scott. Good to be a guest on the show. This is really a switch. <laughs> yeah, great. Well, it's great to have you, of course, <laughs> right, to play your role, <laughs> but ultimately... Um, Look, there's been a series of events that happened, Gail. Give us the download of what's happened uh, in your Well, basically, I had an uncle who was my last living uncle, who was 97 and a half, and he went into the hospital for a urinary tract infection, and they tested him for COVID-19, and he was positive. And that was the descent, and less, maybe a week later, he passed away last week. Mm, I'm sorry to hear that. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. So, um, yeah, he was my last living uncle. So it's sort of, um, in reflecting, he's, he's the last of that generation. So, of course, you're going to feel a certain uh, reservation about losing your last uncle. But he was, one of, he was my favorite uncle. He was a wonderful man. So it's a combination of losing somebody that you've had for a long time and then realizing that, hey, you're on the front line now, <laughs> so to speak. So. Of course, like, that makes sense. Uh, that makes a lot of sense. Gail, you mentioned that your uncle was someone that we worked on getting an interview of on because he was someone who kind of lived with gusto, if you will. Tell us a little bit about the the backstory of how uh, you had some conversations right. with him. Well, he was living with, in independent living with his wife. He was just celebrated his sixty fifth wedding anniversary this year, and he was eager to be on the show so but he didn't have access to a computer so he couldn't exactly do zoom so we tried doing it on the phone but unfortunately the audio didn't work out so we never really had him on the show per se but it was interesting interviewing him because i learned more about him that i didn't know so i didn't know he was colorblind um which was interesting and that blue was his favorite color and why because it was easier for him to see um, he had, he was really a very kind man. He loved to sail. He started sailing when he was about 12 years old and he sailed the Great Lakes and he kiddingly said he preferred this one lake in Iowa. Because, why? Because the wind always blew the same direction. <laughs> so that was his favorite lake. But he had some advice uh, for me and for everyone else who listens to this podcast. As you grow older, he said, you got to just take things as they come because nothing is going to stay the same. And I'm sure I've learned that so far and I'm sure you have, Scott. So he also recommended that you find something that you really love to do. Now, he loved to work. He worked in the uh, eye, eye business. He was an optometrist and he um, worked till he was 87 years old. He really loved what he did and he was perfect for that because he was amiable and people connected with him easily, people of all ages. So that's what he did. He loved to tell stories, which I never get tired of hearing people's stories who lived a long time. Um, he told one story about when he was in college, he lived with an eccentric college professor in his house. He was, the professor was extremely popular, but always an enigma to my uncle because he never wore different clothes. He always wore the same thing and he always slept on an outdoor porch all year round. And so he was, I would call him eccentric, but he was very popular and that was a really interesting part of his life. I had another uncle who we told a story about that I thought was very interesting. This uncle was a surgeon and he was stationed in India during World War II. And he happened to also, before he went to medical school, he was the national marble champion. He had had very good hand-eye coordination. And he won that a couple years, my uncle said, in a row, and then he gave it up when he was a teenager. But went to med school and got stationed in India, and he was a good tennis player. So one day the Maharaji saw him playing tennis, and he said, you know, I, I really would like to play tennis with you. On Sundays I have a tennis court in my home please come and play. So every Sunday, 
when he was in India, he played tennis with the Maharaji. One Sunday, his, the Maharaji's daughter had an appendicitis attack. Well, my uncle wasn't really supposed to operate on her, but he did and he saved her life. So when he was getting ready to leave India after the war was over, the Maharaji said, please don't leave without seeing me. So he went up to the Maharaji and the Maharaji handed him a brown paper bag. He said, don't look inside the bag till you get on the plane. And he didn't. And when he, he left India, he looked in the bag and he had given him dozens of star sapphires from India. So I just thought, you know, it's funny. My uncle had a pinky ring. Now, nobody in our family ever wore rings. No men just didn't wear jewelry, a watch, that was it. And I remember as a child noticing this ring and never, I never really questioned him, like, why are you wearing that? Where did you get that ring? And I found out through this uncle that just passed away. So that was fun for me. So I encourage people to really talk to their relatives or older people in their lives and get these stories because some of them are just really terrific, I think. Yeah. You never know when you have your last opportunity to ask, unfortunately, but, but right. so he lived to 97 years old. That's pretty amazing. Uh, right. It seems that, that I guess we could say from a third party standpoint, probably one of the reasons why uh, he, he seemed like he worked and he had a great life, but also he had hobbies. Right. And that seems like definitely something. Well, playing that, poker in independent living. Um, that was his, what he did. Poker and sailing, huh? So good. <laughs> sailing, not so much in his later years. In his later you know, years, right? He had fond memories of that. But, right, keeping busy. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Cool. So there's a turn of the events here, right? So unfortunately, uh, he passed away, right? Right. So, and of course, we're in a COVID-laden world right now, and things have changed in a lot of different ways, for the good and for the bad. Um, but tell us a little about the story of how... Um, Tell us about that story. Okay. He, my uncle had three kids and one, his son lives in China and one daughter in California. The other daughter was actually visiting when this all transpired. So, and not many people could get there. Nobody's really flying. So they decided to do a Zoom funeral. So this was my first Zoom funeral. And it was interesting. It was very different. Um, I would call it a plus minus experience in that I think it was great that I could be there and support the family um, and also have some closure. On the other hand, I didn't feel as emotionally connected because I really wasn't there. They held the service at the gravesite. So there was a tent. I couldn't really see who was in attendance physically. I could see the person officiating I could see the casket, um, and it was interesting. I mean, um, it, was long, it was like 40 minutes long. There were 37 participants on Zoom. You could hear the crickets. You could see the trees, so it was very kind of back to nature, which was interesting. Um, and the, if they presented my aunt with a flag because my uncle was in some form of the armed forces during the war, World War II. But... The officiant talked a lot about my uncle from the time he was born and his family that he was born into to his passing away and talked about my uncle's values, which I thought was interesting, which included being open hearted and being educated and, and providing service to people. So, so that she did a very good job of um, capturing his life. I learned some things I didn't know about him. For example, he ate a chocolate bar every day of his life. <laughs> so that was interesting. And as part of the ceremony, they, the immediate family put together this box with all of his favorite things. So they had chocolate bar, potato chips, Snapdragon flour, uh, poker, car, poker chips or poker cards or both, whatever. And that went down with him. And so, um, so that was different. But the interesting thing is that every, I guess, religion handles this differently, but there's a section of the funeral and the gravesite service where people are asked to come and shovel dirt into the grave. What was interesting was that everybody had masks and gloves on, so I couldn't really identify who these people were. So that was different. That was really different. Interesting. Interesting. So, so obviously it's a sad situation to begin with, obviously, right. but, and it was a interesting experience that you could dial in 
Um, was it was it through Zoom or was it was it something? It was if you don't mind Zoom. me asking, the yeah. actual the it was, Zoom. Yeah, okay. it was a Zoom funeral, and you know what? Thank, I'm so lucky that we have Zoom because otherwise we would all, if we were in this situation that we're in right now, and we didn't have Zoom, then we would miss out on all this. Right. So I think it's great. I also the officiant told a quote from my uncle that I had never heard, and I just thought it was really nice. But his favorite saying or philosophy was, "In a world where you can be anything." Be kind. I thought that was that's great. That's a great, that's yeah. probably a nice way to wrap this up, right? But at mm-hmm. the end of the day, um, it's unfortunately a sad situation all around with COVID and a funeral. But uh, fortunately, you were able to log in and, and at least uh, right. console. Or can, it doesn't replace being there, but at the end of the exactly. day, it's a close second, right? Right. So interesting story of your uncle, interesting story <laughs> of um, – the virtual funeral. I'm, I thank you for sharing that with us today, Gail. Sure, sir. And um, and of course, prayers to you and your family and your condolences. You. But but at the end of the day, um, this is this is a new world. We li- we're in a new situation, and it's also uh, very good to hear that that we're coping. Us as a, as the world, or as Americans, or as people, we're coping, and that's right. that's great to hear. So, thank you, Gail. Anything else? No. Well, as my uncle would say, things never stay the same. <laughs> so here we are. <laughs> here we are here we are well that's it that's it for this edition Adum. that's it for this edition of growing older with gusto we thought this would be just kind of a nice little quick breezy conversation uh, it's a little heavy topic but uh, but hopefully it brought some cheer to your heart at the end so gail uh, why don't you give us a sign off thank you so much for listening to growing older with gusto this is a podcast that was created to help people learn from older generations, how to grow older with gusto. So whether you're 30 or you're 60, it's always fun to listen in. And thanks. Thanks for watching. Please subscribe to our channel and check out our website at www.growingolderwithgusto.com.